Hello everyone, this is Evan Abrams, and in today's After Effects tutorial, we're going to be creating extruded shadowed text like you've probably seen in the latest promo for the Hungry Games movie. Hungry? Yeah, that's what the movie's called. Anyway, we're going to be creating this in After Effects, and uh, may the odds be ever in your flavor? That's... yeah, no. No, I know movie quotes. We're here in After Effects, and we'd like to create this sort of text and objects extruding through a planar surface, much like you've seen in the promos for the new movie in the Hungry Games uh, series. And uh, a few things to get out of the way before we start the tutorial. Thing the first, we're working in After Effects, and... This kind of 3D lighting and shading is probably best done in something like Cinema 4D or Maya or maybe 3DS Max even. We're not doing them in those because people have been asking me how to do this in After Effects, so we're gonna do that. And uh, I'm not like an expert in those 3D programs, but I am an expert in this, so this is what we're gonna do. I might sound like I'm full of myself, but I'm definitely full of something. So what we're using is the ray traced 3D function of After Effects. I guess that's point number two that I wanted to talk about before we start. If you're using an older version of After Effects, you probably don't have ray trace 3D. I think CS6 had it, Adobe CC definitely has it, and if you would like to use it, then you need to go into your composition settings. So in this one, uh, these are the composition settings for the intro that you saw already, like a minute ago. And you can see here, the renderer is ray trace 3D, not classic 3D. So you open up the composition settings, you get the basic settings, blah, blah, blah. Here's the advanced settings that we never touch because they're boring and weird. So we change the renderer from classic 3D to ray trace 3D. When something is classic 3D, you're not able to extrude things, but you are able to make use of a lot of other features. So we're on ray trace 3D, and we go into the options here, and you can see the ray tracing quality is 10, and that means blah, 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 blah. It's gonna use 100 motion blur samples per frame. That is a high number, and it also means that rendering this takes a long time. So, like I said in point number one, uh, using a 3D program is probably best. It is best because that program is set up and designed expressly to make use of rendering in 3D geometry. Real 3D geometry is kind of new to After Effects, and it still takes a long time. You don't have all the whiz-bang options like uh, ocular occlusions, which are when two pieces of geometry meet in a corner using ambient lighting rules, which means light everywhere, it produces shadows where vertexes meet each other. So that's just a way of showing geometry without getting into lighting. So anyway, that's neither here nor there. I opened up these things so that you could see that at ray trace quality 10, we are looking at pretty nice shadows. Everything looks pretty cool. This is great. Um, but we usually work at quality one, and that looks like total crap. However, it doesn't take a couple minutes to render each frame. Well, not minutes, but like an infinite amount of time compared to no time at all. So, you know, this is how we're going to be working. So let's... Let's shut up and get to work. So we're gonna create a new composition, and I'm just gonna be uh, I'm just gonna be creating sort of an example, so an exam example like this. Okay, cool. And it's gonna warn you, hey, you've got ray trace 3D on. That means you can do these, but you cannot do these. All right, so do this, don't do this. Whoop de woo. Okay, cool. That's great because we don't want to do any of those things we can't do, and we do want to do all the things we can do. I'm going to assume that you start off with nothing in your composition, just like me, and I'm going to create a new solid. Cool new solid. And this solid is totally white. Just Fs across the board. Okay, neat. I think it's going to make a rude joke there, but I'm going to, I'm going to take a pass on that one. Now we're going to create some text, um, just because I'm assuming you want to use text in yours, and I'm going to type something. Cool. So, I've written something. You can't see what it is. Uh, I'm just going to poke this thing in the eye. Uh, it says something, and this layer that says something is it's a text layer. I'm going to align it in the center center using the align panel, window align, pull that up, whatever. In the character panel here, I'm using Avenir Black. Um, this is a pretty big font size, and it's spaced out like woo. Uh, it's spaced out, it's in the center, 
We're happy to use this. It's aligned right there. Now we're ready to make everything three dimensional. All right, so woo, now it's three dimensional. I just click this button. Still can't see anything, but I clicked it. So that's cool. Now I'm gonna go in here and uh, see, it might be better if we work in a way that we can see what we're doing. So let's make the rest of the things we need. We need a camera. This one's using the 80 millimeter preset, call it camera one, who cares? Uh, let's create a new light to make one of those. That's cool. Uh, light one, an ambient light, maybe. We'll make one ambient light that is at 50% uh, intensity. An ambient light lights everything evenly, all right? So it doesn't matter its position or anything like that. All that matters is its intensity and its color. And its color is white, its intensity is 50. So it makes everything this uh, 50 shades of gray right here. So now we're gonna go ahead and make another light. All right, new light. This one is going to be a point light. All right, its intensity is only gonna be 10, right? So very, very low on the intensity scale. But its shadow darkness is gonna be 100% and its shadow diffusion is gonna be 960. We definitely want it to cast shadows and the rest of it, who cares? The reason we're having the light intensity be very low is because I'm gonna create a lot of them. And if you have a lot of really intense light, it's just like staring at the surface of the sun. We want an array of not very much light. So we can create many small shadows that are going to subtly sort of flesh out the scene. Now this is only because there just aren't that many lighting options here in After Effects. It's either a parallel spot point or ambient. So, you know, you kind of got to work with what you got. So we're going to stick with this and I'm going to rename these layers here. So this one is going to be point and this other one ambient. There's something. Um, I wonder if the drug Ambient has anything to do with Ambient. I guess it just makes your world a bit brighter. So. Uh, so we've got this text here, and what I need it to do is cast shadows. So I'm going to hit AA here, and that's going to call up its geometry options and its material options. So bevel style none. We're not beveling this at all. Bevel depth is zero. Let's do that. Uh, bevel hole depth, also zero, because... We don't care about either of those, but the extrusion depth, let's extrude this thing, all right? So I typed 200 in there and you didn't see anything change. Let me go to custom view number one. So you can see as I change this extrusion depth, then uh, this thing is getting longer. So I think 200 is all we need because we just need it to not uh, come all the way through this thing. So if you move it forward like this, then I like guess annoying. Anyway, right now it is extruding backwards from zero, meaning it's sitting right at the line here. And we're gonna go into the material options next, and we're gonna have it cast some shadows. Right now that's on off. We're gonna set it to be on. So now if this thing comes out in front, you can see that it is casting shadows onto this big gray, actually white, but in this case, gray because it's kind of dark thing, right? So this is casting shadows because it is real 3D geometry. And if I move this around, it changes where the shadows are. Perfect. So conceptually, you now know everything you need to make this work. So let's uh, animate it. There isn't much that needs to be animated. And in fact, uh, the animating is uh, really boring. So we're going to go animate, position, cool. And then we're gonna also add the property of enabling per character 3D. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna have this uh, pop through by, I don't know, negative 150 or something like that. It doesn't matter too much. We are going to animate the range selector. We're also going to go into the advanced options here a little bit. And what we're going to do is we're going to start the range selector end all the way here. And we go to 10 seconds and range selector is at 100. So that means each letter is going to come on one after the other. That's neat. Casting new shadows as they protrude through uh, this thing here. So it starts as nothing and it starts coming on. We're going to use these easing options here in the advanced uh, area and uh, we're going to ease low on this. So it kind of, you know, slowly and then fast and kind of clicks in. So that's kind of neat. Maybe 50%. I don't know. Do whatever you feel 
looks best for you. Um, I don't I don't really care. Don't worry too much about easy easing these keyframes you've created though. Now that is because these just make the range selector move, right? So the range selector is this line and this line. And if you want to affect the range selector, you want to mess around here in the advanced tab. So, you know, we're using the square, but it could be the ramp up. It could be the ramp down. It could be all sorts of things, you know, but uh, you need to figure out for yourself which is going to work best. I'm just trying to get through this so I can get on with my day. We've got, uh, we've got this thing animating on, but it looks pretty terrible. So let's look through the active camera at the front. We have one light creating some shadows. Not that cool, all right? Let's call up the position of this thing, and we're gonna move it up here like this, all right? We're gonna create like a lighting array out of these things. So I'm gonna duplicate this point light, and I'm gonna move it over here. So see how we're now creating more shadows? We wanna vary up where these are, so the shadows overlap, but also create new areas of shadow, all right? I'm gonna duplicate that again, I'm gonna move it down here. What do you think about that? And I'm gonna move it even further away, so it's like this. Now I'm gonna duplicate that again, and uh, maybe I'm gonna fill in, fill in some of this zone over here, all right? So right now it's pretty top heavy. I'm gonna duplicate this again, and I'm gonna move one all the way down here so that it's pushing shadows in the opposite direction. You know, you can see moving it further away elongates the shadows. So, you know, shadows, 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 blah, 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 blah. Anyway, we've got heavy on this side, light on this side. I don't know if there are more sides that you want to cover. Um, you know, duplicating more of these can be helpful to that, but really you just want to give these things depth by uh, sort of altering the, the way in which the shadows s sort of go, right? Although the preview version, you know, and the, the promo that you're familiar with looks very bright and white, uh, that is because we are using a lot of light to kind of make this shades of gray thing happen, right? So what you might also wanna do is go in and create a new adjustment layer over top of all this and use the curves to play around with sort of the contrast between things or to, uh, to really get more than you can do with just the lighting alone. So maybe you want some of the shadows to be a little bit brighter. Uh, maybe you wanna get the maximum brightness value down a little bit so it never goes super white. But uh, I think you get the idea. So that's using the adjustment layer. You might want to apply a vignette across it. You might want to apply a gradient across it. Uh, you might want to do a whole lot of things. I don't know. But uh, the big thing is that as these are coming on, you're creating lots and lots of shadows. And when you go to render this and save this information in your brain for later, but when you render it, you're going to go into the options and then you're going to pick a high number somewhere you know, between five, but closer to 10, probably, you know, will produce results that you might be happy with. So after some clicking and whirring, we get something that looks like this. Nice, soft shadows, you know, the geometry is, is very subtle and uh, it's just good. So while we're working though, we're leaving it down at like one, okay? Just because I don't want you to sit here and wait for every frame to render that takes several minutes. So uh, I think that's it for extruding things through stuff. If you want to extrude like a logo or something, then you'll want to make it out of shape layers. So uh, we look here at the EC Abrams uh, example. This is just a couple of shape layers and any shape layer layer can do this. You just do it exactly the same. You go in geometry options and extrude it. That's it, and then you just keyframe its position. Woohoo! Here in the example that we're working on, uh, we have not talked about camera angles. In the example, look how many friggin' cameras I've got. This camera's all over the place. Now, why I did that is because I wanted to get different angles on this thing. So I've got one continuous uh, shot that I was thinking I might cut back to every so often. I didn't, because it was boring, but each of these is just a new camera 
and it'll always switch to the camera that is on the top. So this camera is above this camera, so we look through this one first. So in the example, we've got a camera. I'm gonna call up its position, and I'm just going to uh, sort of zoom in a little bit. Sorry, I'm going to dolly in a little bit. I'm not actually zooming this freaking thing. I'm gonna get technical, and I'm going to pull out uh, uh, here at the end, and I'm going to resize this solid here so that it takes up all the framing no matter how I'm framing it. So we've got one shot that's kind of slowly pulling back. Cool. Um, let's wait until one, two of these things have come on, and then let's make a new camera. We just go layer, new, and uh, put in a new camera. Sure, camera two, that's a good name. And we are going to trim this camera, holding down alt, and hitting the uh, square brackets. And this camera is gonna last one, two letters also. That's neat. And uh, there we go. Just like this. And now we will reposition this camera to be somewhere more interesting, all right? Let's make sure we are looking through camera two. And then we can use the camera tools. I'm just cycling through them by hitting C and uh, point them around interesting places to look at things. So we can we can zoom it in, we can move it around, make the angle a bit more severe, and put it right here. Cool, so see, like we were saying, we are looking at the active camera. The active camera is this one, and then it changes to this one. So, you know, blah, 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 and you shift it around. And, you know, you can animate these, you can move them around. I like to use multiple cameras just because it's easier to control the motion of one camera in a specific space and then cut to it, just like you would on a real film set. If you start putting in like 100 keyframes for different positions of cameras and you're not actually interested in the movement between those areas, then, you know, just cut to a new camera and you'll find it's easier to control the motion of that camera. But I think that's about it. The rest is really gonna be down to your creativity and your excellent brain for making these things. Uh, I'm Evan Abrams, and uh, if you have any other questions about this kind of thing, then ask them in the comments, and I'll try to help you out as best I can. Um, if you have any questions in general about After Effects or motion graphics, or you just want to uh, talk about stuff, like feelings, then, uh, you know, hit me up on the Facebook, uh, Google Plus, or on Twitter, at EC Abrams. Links to all those things are in the description. Uh, if you want to check out the uh, the project file for this thing, uh, I think you can get it through my website. That's a possibility. There'll be links to that, too, in the description. So head on over to evanabrams.com and check that out. Uh, if you want to see other tutorials about moving things in 3D uh, using the camera, I'll put links to those, I guess, right in front of you, and then you can enjoy that. So uh, definitely check those out. If you are uh, interested in learning more about After Effects or motion graphics, VFX, that kind of stuff, subscribe to this channel. I'll put up new stuff all the time. Not as often as I'd like, but there's usually new stuff here. And check out all the old tutorials, too. There's like over 100 on here. That's a high number. So check that out. Anyway, this has been Evan Abrams talking to you about the Hungry Games. And, uh, oh, yeah, I should have mentioned this at the beginning. But I say Hungry Games because uh, I don't like being sued by big intellectual properties. So that's cool. But, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. And uh, if you subscribe, I'll see you around the Internet. Thanks again and have a nice day.